This video is a Binance copy trading tutorial. If you're looking to copy trade using the Binance platform, we'll go over exactly how it works, how to navigate this system, how to actually go ahead and copy, and then some of the risks and other things you should be thinking about if you actually wanna go ahead with this. I'll leave timestamps down in the description. Binance copy trading for right now is futures only. So if you're in a country that doesn't allow futures trading, you won't be able to use this. I will leave a link below to Binance as well. If you are in a country that allows futures trading, you can get a deposit and trading bonus. You can check the details below if it's available for you. But for right now, we're gonna to go to Binance Futures. And then once you click into the Binance Futures page, you can see copy trading up there. Now you can see it kind of disappears right now. As I said, this is a brand new feature. So if you uh, can see it here, copy trading, just click on that. Or you can just search for Binance Copy Trading in your application and it's there as well. Uh, you can get to this page. Now, once we're here, you can see the overview. So firstly, we need to search uh, for all the copy traders and their performance over time. So if you come down to the portfolio list right here, you can see uh, different things that you can look at. So the seven day, I would change this to 90 day or 30 day. What we're looking at here is the history of these copy traders, right? And so what we're really looking for is you know, have they got a history and is that history good? Because if they're obviously losing a lot of money, you're not gonna to wanna to copy trade. So go to something like 30 or 90 and you can see what they've done over that time. Now, as I said, this is brand new, right? So we're gonna to go to 30 day and see 30 day history right here. Then what we can do is actually search via these options here. So P&L is profit and loss. So, you know, what's the actual P&L of that trading account? So you can see that is uh, the you know, best trader right here. And then the P&L of various other traders, you can see this is in dollar terms. Um, so that's how much they're making. And this is the return on investment. So, you know, the percentage gain versus what they had in their account. So obviously, the more profitable traders you, you're going to be wanting to look at. However, what I would suggest is going for the longest time frame possible. You want people that are actually making money over you know, a longer time frame because you know, anyone can get right up to the top over a seven day period. They get lucky in a trade, goes really well, but then the rest of their account, they're making losses. So you have to look at all of the history of the copy traders. Then we can go to ROI, which is obviously return on investment here. So you can see that MDD is maximum drawdown. So the maximum drawdown is if they've lost a trade or they have losing trades, what is the maximum drawdown uh, for those accounts? What I would suggest is you want people who are making you know, decent returns and not having huge drawdowns in the accounts. Because if, if they're having big drawdowns, what type of risk are they taking? Are they, you know, are they kind of too laissez-faire with their um, you know, trades and everything like that? So you can obviously make those decisions, but see what the maximum drawdown is. The maximum drawdown here, 0%, right? So he's not actually had a loser um, in his trades. And then if we go down, you can see maximum drawdown 0.05. That gets much worse for certain traders again. So you can just see their history and see if they're actually, you know, a decent trader or not, or if they're just, you know, kind of punting around, right? You definitely don't want to be going through that. Then we can see here AUM, assets under management. This shows us the traders who have the most under management. It's right here. So this guy has yeah, 800,000 under management, 480,000, 430,000 under management. Now traders that have larger amounts under management are going to trade very differently because they have copy traders. Uh, they may trade larger assets uh, because with more trading, you need more liquidity, right? And so you need not be able to trade larger trades. If you have traders that have very small amounts under management, are they trading altcoins, right? So that can actually be part of your strategy to copy more than one trader at a time, or maybe have a collection of them that trade different things. That's up to you. The amount of copy traders, so the amount of people that are actually copy trading them, I think there is a limit of around 500 per copy trader. So what you can do is press copy or press full here. So if you press full uh, and it's full, so there's five, 500 traders copying. If someone drops out copying, then you can obviously fill that place. Um, copy trader PL is different because when copy trading, you can actually copy the traders' entries and exits and their trades, but you can also really um, choose how much you copy. So are you going to copy the exact size that they trade in or are you going to copy smaller amounts? Uh, is your stop loss and take profit level different to theirs? You can choose all of that. And so what I would suggest is looking at the trader themselves, what they're doing, because the copy traders PL, your PL, and all the others people's uh, trading PL could be wildly different to what the copy trader is doing because they may have different inputs. So important to know that difference and we'll go through that in a second as well. But that is navigating this system and looking through different copy traders and what they're doing.
Now we'll click on a copy traders page and you can see all of the details of how they trade, you know, the losses that they're making, the profits that they're making. So we're gonna click on this guy right here uh, and then see exactly what they're doing. So what we can see is how they trade and every single trade that they've made. So we know if they're maybe more of a long-term trader, if they're a day trader, if they're like, you know, trying to scalp trades, we can see all of that. Uh, and that's gonna uh, tell us a lot about what they're doing. So as you can see here, only trading Bitcoin and ETH uh, due to liquidity, right? So this trader has a lot under management, as you can see, almost $500,000. So uh, just Bitcoin and ETH because maybe the trades are larger or maybe they have a lot under management and they just really can't trade those smaller coins. Performance, maybe we can look at 30 day performance. We're gonna look at 30 day P&L. So 30 day P&L is pretty good, right? As you can see here, they're you know, making decent profits uh, over the last 30 days, return on investment, uh, as you can see here, around you know 2% over 30 days. You know, it's not, not a terrible uh, performance there. Current positions, not in the market right now. So as you can see, if they have current positions, then people are gonna be trading. If the trader isn't trading or doesn't have any open positions, neither will you as a copy trader. Position history, we can see here. So we can look exactly what this trader is doing. So this trader went long uh, ETH and they opened uh, at, at uh, eight o'clock in the evening or eight, yeah, eight o'clock in the evening and closed about an hour later. So that was basically a scalp trade or, or something like that, right? And so a profit there, you can see they went short Bitcoin. Uh, and again, they kept the position open for what, a couple of hours. Uh, so we can see here, usually the positions are open for uh, probably a couple of hours, maybe a day, something like that, you know, overnight. Uh, so pretty short term trading, right? These are just kind of day trades, scalp trades. Maybe they're looking at um, you know, different technical analysis to open these trades. But a lot of these trades are, you know, short term day trading scalps like this and, you know, small kind of profits over that time. Um, obviously with leverage that can change, change as well though. Uh, and then trade history, you can see all of the actual trades that they've gone in and out of. As a copy trader, you would be looking to copy the opens and the closes, right? So you can change the amount that you put in per trade, transfer history, and then copy traders. You can see all of the different uh, copy traders that are copying this trader and the return on investment that they've made as well. If you're happy to copy a trader, you can click copy and then you can really dial in the way you want to actually copy these trades. So if we click on copy on a trader, as long as we're allowed to do that, uh, if it's not full uh, of either copy traders, you have two options here. You have fixed amount or fixed ratio. So fixed amount, each order, each order will be opened at a fixed margin amount or cost per order. Uh, so let's say the trader opens a trade. You can say every trade that they open, I want to open a trade with a specific dollar amount in my account. So if they open one trade with $1,000 or whatever, you can say, I just wanna open each trade with 50 bucks, right? So it doesn't matter if they're trading 1,000 or 500,000, your trade is exactly the same. Maybe it's $1,000 per trade or whatever. Fixed ratio is your um, opening trades in the relation that they open trades in their account, right? So again, it's not the exact amount that you're copying, but as an example, if they have you know, $100,000 in their account and they open a position in Bitcoin, and that position is around 10% of their trading account, you will copy that for you. Now you may not have the same amount of money that they have, but it's gonna open 10% of the amount that you have. So if they open a trade with 30% of their account, 30% of your account will be traded as well. So you're um, trading with the same percentage that they're trading, right? Which one should you choose? Um, it really depends, you know, with fixed amount, it's very simple. You know exactly how much you're copying each time. So $100 per trade, the fixed ratio, this could lead to you know different margin requirements for you because they have different margin requirements. They have a different amount of money. Uh, so I would just be careful with you know how exactly you're trading. Um, you just need to make sure that you have enough margin in your account to fund everything. So fixed ratio, may be a little bit better to go for because they're opening 20% of their account, they're opening 50% of their account. So that's uh, maybe reducing risk a little bit because you know exactly how much percentage they're opening and you're opening the same percent. With fixed amount, as long as you have lots of margin in your account, it doesn't really matter. But of course, if they're opening positions that are, let's say 20% of their account, with a fixed amount for you, that could be 20, 30, 40, 50% of your account, especially if there are multiple trades open at once. So you just have to make sure that whatever is happening here, you have enough margin to fund trades. Because if you don't, uh, then the margin is gonna get quite tight for you 
and you could get liquidated if you're making losses losses in some positions whereas the the, the actual trader may not be because they have enough margin we'll look at fixed amount trading first then this is when a trader opens a position you open the position at the same time in the same direction but you just choose a flat amount to open the trade with so let's go cost per order would be fifty dollars so fifty dollars per trade you open that the total copy amount is the total amount of margin that you want to put in to copy this trader with so you know if they're opening uh, 10 trades cost per order would be 500 for you or the, the total cost 500 for you and the copy amount you want an amount of margin that can fund those trades you know and fund potential losses of those trades and keep them open so the total amount that you want to put towards copying that trader and then if you have many trades open that will be this so this has to be more than the cost per order and then the total stop loss is you can actually create a stop loss where if your margin which is this this thousand here if this gets down to a loss so let's say they open seven trades a fewer in a loss fewer maybe flat and you're getting down to you know like a 30 percent uh, loss on your total copy amount that's when trades will start to be stopped out for you now this copy trader may ride this down to 50 60 percent loss if you're not comfortable with that and you don't, you don't want to ride that or if they've just opened a lot of orders uh, you know and you're actually having a cost per order that is more than them or as a percentage of your account more than them because you're on fixed amount what you can essentially do is just say bottom line is that if my thousand dollar account is 30 percent down i start when i, I want to start trading out of positions and start liquidating them for a loss so that you can see down here your total loss would be you know 30 percent right so that's something that you can look at throughout time. You can actually change the copy amount. You can add more margin if you want. Obviously, that just means that you um, are putting more towards the trades. This is a stop loss saying that when we're down 30%, we're out. Advanced settings, you can copy the margin mode of the lead trader, or you can go to fixed mode. So they might be using uh, isolated margin or cross margin. Isolated margin is where they fund individual trades. Cross margin is where you just have an amount of money to fund all of the trades. Uh, isolated margin can be a little bit um, uh, less risky than cross margin. So if you go to fixed mode, you can actually change this. Because remember, what's happening here is when they open a position, you open a position in your futures trading account as well. Uh, and so what you can do is manage those positions. You can actually go into your futures trading account and just edit out of the positions. You can trade out of them at a profit or a loss whenever you want, and you can add margin to different uh, positions. So you can actually do this yourself if you want to choose that. If you want to know more about futures trading, I'll leave some you know guides on futures trading below. It goes through all of these different things like margin and leverage and everything like that and what the different options are. So that video is down in the description. You can just copy uh, the lead traders margin here. Leverage, you can copy their leverage. Again, if they're trading with, let's say, 2x leverage and they're taking you know less risk in a position if you're opening with 10x leverage you're you're copying the side of the trade if they're long you're going long but the risk is totally different right so if they're only using 2x leverage and you're using 10 it's a larger amount of your position maybe you don't have enough margin maybe a five percent loss for them is like a lot bigger loss for you you get stopped out you lose money actually they just were using a small amount of margin the price the you know price came down and then went back up they actually you know made a good trade but because you were using more leverage you got stopped out so that's where uh, changing this essentially means that your PL can be very very different to the traders PL. and so yes you're you're copying when they go long or short, when, you, when they go in or out. But if uh, the amount of leverage that you're using and the amount of margin that you have in the account is different, you could get very different results. So definitely keep that in mind. Maybe you just want to choose copying the trader's leverage, you know, or you can just choose a very small amount and, uh, and, and trade that, right? So traders may use anywhere from kind of five to 20x margin. Maybe that's, not, that's just not comfortable for you to use. And you say, you know what, I just want to copy, but one mar one x margin would be no margin or two or three x again that's up to the individual margin can be risky especially if you're copying a trader who has different amounts in their account as to you know what you have then right here for each single position you can choose a take profit and a stop loss this is different to here this is for your account generally and what it's trading it may have 10 positions open this right here is each individual position so if 
The position itself is down 15%. Cut me out, right? I just want to get out. I don't want to take, I don't want to go down 30, 40%. Again, if the trader has a different stop loss to you, your PL is going to be different to them. But you can do that on a position basis. And you can say if we're making a 25% gain or a 30% gain, uh, you can uh, take a profit and actually trade out of that position. And again, they may have no take profit, they may ride it to 60 or 70%, they may, you know, do something else. So your PL may be different to them if you choose this, but it is risk management if you're not comfortable with kind of seeing, you know, bigger losses in the account. And for sure, these traders can make losses and they may ride a position down kind of 80% or so. Now, obviously, that's not good. We can also choose max position per symbol. So again, if one trader is taking a huge bet on one position, then you can kind of limit that and say, you know, we don't want the whole account getting wrecked by one trade. And so you can put that in maybe 50% or 20%. And again, your p &L is gonna be very different to the trader if you're, um, you know, doing this, but that's up to the individual trader. Then just read the service agreement. I would read this carefully. There are many risks here, especially with copying traders in terms of your margin, right? Because it's really up to you. You're copying the ins and outs but the margin you're using, how much margin you have to fund trades, how much leverage they're using, all of that is going to determine um, how your account is actually traded, right? So they could be using less margin than you, more margin than you. If you're not managing these positions carefully, you can get stopped out in one trade. And you're like, what happened? They just used a ton of margin, you copied that, you didn't have enough margin in the account, and they kind of, you know, didn't blow up their account, but you can blow up yours. So there are many risks here, and I would definitely read this and just make sure you're happy with that. Uh, and then go ahead and copy, and you can essentially open trades when and if the lead trader is opening the trade. If you do have any positions open, they're all gonna be in your futures trading account. You can also see them in the overview right here. So if you just go to this uh, arrow right here, it's gonna take you through to uh, all of the positions that you have open. So this is brand new. I've not been copying anyone on, on the Binance platform as right now, it's just open, but ongoing. Any trades that you have, you're gonna see this. So if you have an amount of margin, right? Let's say you have $1,000 in the account for margin, you can see the realized P&L, net profit here. Uh, so if you know your net profit is in a loss and the margin balance is getting pretty low, you can add margin in if you want, you can take it away if you want, or the portfolio list right here is gonna show you every single trade and then on the right hand side, there should be an option to essentially get out of that trade. If, if one trades in a loss, you want to cut it, you can manually cut it here. There'll just be an option to cut it, an option to view it. You can see all of this, you can click these. This will go through to your futures trading screen and you should be able to see all of those orders uh, live as well because your account will be opening these trades. It's just an instruction to say, open this trade when this other trader opens their trade. But these trades are yours, they're your futures trades. You can manage them in any way that you want, but you can see all ongoing trades, any closed trades here. I have copy traded before and there are definitely some risks with copy trading. The main one is getting wrecked with leverage. Uh, the copy traders can go into some really crazy trades short term. And if you're using a fair amount of leverage, it can really wreck those trades really, really quickly. So I would recommend this with very, very low margin and putting way more margin in your account than you think you need because trades can go very wrong very quick with this type of trading. It definitely is a risk. Also, what you may want to do is try and spread the risk over a few different traders. So rather than just copying one trader, maybe you know copy six or seven traders or whatever it is for you and have like a portfolio of copy traders and just kind of see how it goes. That's my two cents on it anyway. Link below to Binance and some more helpful videos uh, down in the description as well for you. I'm James, it's Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.